All right, so the next experiment you're gonna do is the complexometric determination of cobalt. So you have a mixture right here in your unknown of cobalt and nickel. These are both metal ions. They're both plus two ions. So we need to separate them. And this is gonna be something you'll need to figure out and write in your lab notebook is how is this resin able to separate two metal ions with identical charges? So we're gonna to need to make a column with resin to separate them. We're using an anion, anion exchange resin. You'll see that either in a bottle like this or larger bottles, we have multiple resin bottles. So the first thing you're gonna to need to do is get yourself about three inches or seven centimeters of this resin. So you'll simply pour from this bottle and depending upon how the resin was put away, there may be a lot of water with the resin. You need to make sure that you're not counting the resin in this, the three inches, but you're actually, or not counting the water, but you're actually counting the resin. This is gonna have a clamp on it. So you're gonna wanna open up that clamp, let that liquid flow through so we can see the water's draining through. And what I wanna do is just see how much actual resin we end up with. Your column should allow the water to flow through at a fast drip. If it doesn't, then get another column until you find one that does. There are lots of different columns. So you, each group person or group, you're actually gonna be doing this in a, each group should be able to find one column that works, that allows the uh, liquid to go through at a relatively quick drip. So we'll let that go through. Once you have your three inches of resin, you're gonna to need to condition your column. For conditioning your column, you're gonna use the nine molar HCL. The uh, nine molar HCL, of course, is very concentrated. So I would not take more than you need at any one time. And um, I would cover it with a watch glass to avoid the fumes. You're probably gonna have to make several trips. But like I said, instead of getting 150 milliliters, just get 30, 40, 50 at a time. And then we'll do that resin regeneration. And we'll probably end up with maybe less than three inches because I'm trying to do this relatively quickly. A few moments later. All right, so once you've got your resin and it's wet, once you've conditioned it, like you start adding your HCL, what we want is to keep the wet, wet, <laughs> resin wet the entire time. I don't want the resin to dry out. So if I can add the next aliquot of either the HCL or the unknown or the water before it dries out, that's fine. If I'm not able to do that, then I'm gonna to wanna to clamp it, add that amount, and then unclamp it to avoid it drying out. Whenever I add whatever I'm adding to the resin, in this case, I'm regenerating the resin with HCL, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add it around the inside walls of the uh, column that way I avoid dropping it directly on the resin and I'm not gonna crater the resin, making indentations or imperfections in the resin that's gonna result in a bad separation. And we're just gonna regenerate this with the full amount of HCL it says in the instructions. I believe it's 25 milliliters. Uh, and then we'll go to our unknown and then additional HCL. After I've conditioned the column, I'm going to add the unknown. Here we want to be especially precise. We want to add exactly one milliliter of the unknown to the column. And again, after we've conditioned it with the HCL and we have just a single millimeter or so of that liquid on top of the column, we'll go ahead and add our unknown. And when we add this, more than likely we'll start to see that green color appear. And hopefully, ideally, what we get is a solid horizontal green band moving through the column. Then we're gonna add additional HCL. The instructions say to add 40 milliliters. However, you may end up adding less than this. Your goal is to move that green band along the column and get it near the bottom. As soon as it's near the bottom, you wanna switch out from your waste beaker to your collection beaker and start collecting with water if you haven't yet. Your goal is to collect the entire green band 
and to collect it under water if you can. The less acid you collect with that green band, the easier the next step is going to be. Where after we collect the green band and it's very acidic, we are then gonna to have to raise the pH with sodium hydroxide. So if we have only a little bit of acid and mostly water, that step is gonna be a lot easier, a lot faster. It's gonna require a lot less sodium hydroxide to neutralize that acid. If, however, the green band moves very quickly, let's say I've added only 20 milliliters of the HCl and the green band is near the bottom. I'm not gonna worry about adding the other 20 milliliters of HCl. I'm gonna stop adding HCl right away. I'm gonna clamp uh, the tube at the end. I'm gonna swap out my beaker to my collection beaker and I'm gonna start adding water at that point. And we're just about there. And it may be, like I said, that it moves, the green band moves with the um, HCl. It's very possible that the green band doesn't move with the HCl. Don't worry if it doesn't, it's definitely going to move a lot very quickly once you start adding the water. What the hell? Oh my God, no. You're also gonna wanna check the green band on all sides of the column. Make sure it isn't moving faster on one side than on another. And it looks like my green band now is getting near the bottom. So I'm gonna stop with this aliquot. I'm gonna utilize that clamp, lock this up, and swap from my waste beaker to my empty collection beaker. Then open it back up and begin adding water gonna add the full amount of water that it tells me to add and even if I have added most of the water and I don't see the green band anymore I'm gonna keep adding and collect all that water in that beaker I want to be a hundred percent sure that I get all of that cobalt collected out of the column and into that beaker before I move on to the next step one eternity later once I've collected the entirety of that green band I'll clamp up my column and like I said, you're gonna be working in groups. So one member of your group is now gonna take your um, rinse through the column, what contains your water and your cobalt. They're gonna take that and prepare it for titration. So they're gonna have a sodium hydroxide solution. We'll have pH meters around the room. So again, you can check the pH with the pH probe, adding you know, five, six drops of sodium hydroxide at a time. Make sure you mix. Once your pH is in the appropriate range, uh, slightly basic, you'll add a little bit of acetic acid to bring it back down to about a pH of six. And then you're gonna add your ammonium thiocyanate and your acetone, at which point you should have a vibrant blue solution uh, about this color. And you're gonna titrate that with the EDTA. And while one group member is doing that, member two and three can recondition the column with HCl and then collect, add in a second aliquot of the unknown collect that and move through. So you'll do a total of three aliquots of the unknown with each member of your group getting a chance to prepare and titrate one of the solutions. As the third person wraps up and they're doing the titration, person one and two should be done and they can break down the whole setup and you'll be done for the day. Um, I'll give you additional instructions, of course, on the day of the uh, lab and you have your lab manual as well and your pre-lab questions, but hopefully seeing this in action has given you a little bit better idea of, of how the lab's gonna work, what you're gonna be doing the day of the lab. Um, that's all, thank you, and I'll see you next week.